accurate thinking. Hi, I'm Brian Pombo. Welcome back to Brian J. Pombo Live. Napoleon Hill is a very famous writer from uh, way, way back in the day. <laughs> Wrote Think and Grow Rich and a whole lot of other classic uh, early books in the field of self-development. And one of the principles he talks about that a lot of people don't give much much attention to is the concept of accurate thinking. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I, I was having a, a great conversation with some folks tonight that were, uh, we're, well, here in Oregon, we are in the midst of the election season. So they have the primary election, which is an, uh, uh, the, the early the early election uh, part of the year when when uh, uh, candidates are running against each other in their own party and when you have nonpartisan races they may have large amounts of groups of people running at the same time for example uh, the governor field is just covered I, I mean I think there's 25 candidates out of the two major parties uh, that the Republicans alone have 20 different people running for uh, for governor that are on the ballot, okay, let alone those who didn't make the ballot and are trying to get written in and all that stuff. So it's a it's pretty amazing to see all this crazy stuff happening when you when you look at it from a certain perspective. But one of the things that I've found with grassroots, I've I've worked a lot with grassroots political organizers through the years, and one thing I've found is that they it's really easy to miss the forest for the trees. And here, here's what I mean. It's really easy to get caught up in the motion and the movement and the feeling like you're doing something or the desire to get something done, to do something. And it's not very often that people sit back and say, okay, well, what, what are we actually doing? You know, have we actually accomplished what we set out to accomplish? Do we actually are we all actually on the same team in terms of what we're looking to accomplish? You know, all these people I'm working with, and so they, when you when you do that, it, it's a, it's not just something that you do once. You have to do it all the time. You have to step back and say, are we accomplishing what we want to? Now, this is just isn't a political thing. This just happens to be the situation tonight. Uh, but I see it all the time in business also, which is even worse because you're dealing with the same people who are actually should know better. But when you're in the midst of that, you know, daily hurricane uh, of just all the stuff you normally have to deal with and then all the stuff that is coming up just recently and then all the stuff that's gotten left behind and it, you, you get mixed up in all that all that garbage of the day-to-day -day when it comes to uh, goals and priorities and really sitting down. Most of us do not take the time to sit down and say, okay, what did we want to do at the beginning of the month? And then where are we now? And how can we change that so we don't have the same thing happen next month? This is rare to happen. It's rare that someone will take the time to do that. If they do, it's usually mixed in with a whole bunch of emotion and a whole bunch of other garbage that doesn't clear things up. It just makes more tension between personalities and sexes and everything else. You know, it, it gets crazy. And I understand if you're in that mess, I understand. And you got to realize that everyone's in that mess to one extent or another. What you need is somebody on your team, or you need to be that person. You need to be able to step back and say, okay, what, what are we actually doing here? Where are we actually going with this? The situation tonight, uh, going back to that scenario, uh, they're, they were doing, uh, they're doing uh, phone calling to get, get out the vote. And so, uh, you know, if you think about it, a lot of times when we talk about politics, when we talk about voting, it's just assumed that you want as many people to vote as possible. Um, and, and you, you just, that that's going to make everything better. If we have more people voting, then that is going to make everything better. But when it really comes down to it, the more involved you get in, in politics, what you really want is more people who are going to vote like you voting 
and less people voting like the other person votes or, or like the people you you don't want voting. And that's really, I, I mean, it's, it's really easy to say, oh, well, yeah, but that's just callous and that's this and that's that. That's reality. If you pay any attention to politics, you want your perspective to win over. Uh, and you no doubt have some moral background as to why your, your position is better and it deserves to win. But that's regardless of the facts. Accurate thinking is, are we getting the ball and taking it across the field and getting a touchdown with it. Accurate thinking is where are we in this process? Are we actually getting done what we want to get done? And oftentimes, when you have a large group of really well-meaning people, they could spend a lot of time doing a lot of nothing or even worse, doing things that take the ball the wrong way on the field. It actually hurts the purpose. But then, you also have to keep very, very uh, broad-minded and say, okay, even if we're losing today, and even if we're helping to lose today, are we achieving on one level that's going to help us win tomorrow and the day after and next year and the year after? So once again, that there's this broad-mindedness to accurate thinking. You have to, you have to not just take in the narrow focus of the moment, but take in the whole big picture. Is, it's all part of it. But it takes somebody making the question, there's always going to be pushback because people don't want to believe that they're wasting their time, effort, um, wasting their, their life energy on, on something, especially if they've been working really hard at something. If you've ever worked with somebody who's worked really hard on a project and then you realize that that project isn't, it isn't what it was supposed to be, or it's going in the completely opposite direction, that person feels like, like you've ripped their heart out if you have to tell them that this isn't gonna work. We have to stop doing this. You can't keep going in this direction. It's tough. It's not easy. But accurate thinking doesn't care about your feelings. <laughs> and in reality, reality is something that none of us have complete control over. We, but we do have to acknowledge its existence. We have to acknowledge math. It's, there's a certain objective mathematics, and I'm not talking anything that has to do with you know, uh, racial background or anything else goes into it. There is completely objective, beyond humanity, concepts of numbers and mathematics to life. And there's a, it's the closest thing of us trying to create a science out of reality. And that reality can't be ignored for long, or you ignore it at your own peril. Accurate thinking must happen. If you don't make it happen, if you don't uh, allow the circumstances for it to occur, then reality will, will crash down on you eventually. There's just no way around it. So just a little tip, a reminder, hopefully to get you moving forward more with asking the right questions, getting some accurate thinking, but also maybe introducing and inviting more people into your organization, into your business, into whatever it is your cause is. Invite those people who have a concept of accurate thinking. None of us are perfect. We all have our subjectivity, but the more people you can get involved that, that are willing to go toward objectivity, the closer it is you'll be able to reach in your goals and dreams and doing everything you want to do in life, which is, I mean, what else is there, right? <laughs> so ho hopefully this is helpful. I've got my book, Nine Ways to Amazon Proof Your Business. I am going to be uh, uh, giving a little talk this weekend in Ohio uh, to, a, to a lot of uh, uh, friends and, uh, and some business partners and so forth. Uh, be talking about some of the principles in my book. If you want to get yourself a free copy of my book, you can go to go to amazonproofbook.com or you can go pick up a hardbound copy. Uh, so sometimes they can they're in the middle of reprinting or whatever, but don't worry, they they go pretty they reprint pretty fast those Amazon folks and and the and my uh, publisher. However, they have that that relationship worked out. It seems to they seem to get books faster than even I can get them. So I'll have some hard copies if you're going to be meeting me there in Cleveland, Ohio this weekend. Otherwise, uh, we will see you tomorrow night. Get out there and let the magic happen. <laughs>